My name is Susie Bird. I'm a city council representative in El Paso, Texas. What you would notice when you first got to El Paso is um, it's a, in a desert, um, but in, in the center is the largest urban park um, in, the, in the country. It's, a, I think, a 34,000 acre mountain, the Franklin Mountain Park, and it divides the city. It's really, really remarkable. Um, the other thing that you would want to know about El Paso is that it uh, shares a border with Juarez, Mexico. It's our sister city and we're very much linked economically, culturally. Um, we're, we're just one kind of region or city or community with a big giant line in the middle of us. Um, and all of those pieces of, uh, you know, the big mountain running through the center of us and then um, the, the dividing line between Juarez and El Paso um, make for very interesting planning and sort of how you do transit and, and all sorts of things. In terms of planning, what makes it kind of interesting is, particularly for transportation planning, is that you're, you're always constrained. Um, so the mountain is always a constraint, the border is always a constraint, and so things that you might do if those things didn't exist, you can't do because they do exist. But there's great opportunities, you know, for example, one thing that we've, we've been thinking Thinking about a lot in our community, um, uh, we we used to have a very robust streetcar system, um, probably one of the most robust um, in the country, um, and it one of the most important links uh, for that was the Juarez Mexico, I mean Juarez El Paso link, and so you had a trolley that would go back and forth every day and all the time, and millions and millions of people. That's how they came. Um, they crossed. Um, unfortunately, it got pulled up like a crazy political battle, as many of those things were. And so, we're hoping to um, keep going with many of those links. We've had it. We now have international transit. Um, sort of the next step that we're eyeing is a streetcar transit between the two communities. We asked people what they were doing currently, um, and from that. Um, uh, survey they said 90% 91% of all of their trips were by car um, but then we asked them what would you prefer to do and we asked them what would you pre prefer to do even if gas stayed the same price and even if congestion stayed exactly the way it is so just you know if, if you were to do it today what, what would be your preference and the, actually the, pr the, the preference showed that um, many, many more people would be willing to ride the bus, would be willing to, to bike, would be willing to, to walk if they had those choices in their neighborhood. And so what I took from that really is that um, we aren't building a transportation network that really m mirrors commuter demand. Um, and so, or, or we're trying to build that, but I, I think more and more we should be saying, you know, here's what commuters want, how are we spending our transportation dollars and does that mirror uh, commuter demand? So for example, if, if we built what commuters wanted or what they said was their, their stated preference, um, uh, there would only be 61% of trips taken by car instead of what they are currently, which is 91%. I think the way that I've always understood smart growth or where I, I come back to is when I th just think about my neighborhood and the neighborhood that I grew up in. And so in my neighborhood, I have a lot of choices. I have the choice to walk my kids to school or have my kids walk to school because we have schools right by. We've got um, a neighborhood park a block away. We've got a big regional park, you know, three or four blocks away. We've got a park and a library library and a, um, you know, the house of pizza and the best tamales in town, um, all within walking distance. Um, we, we really have a lot of choice in terms of the way we get where we want to go. So we can take the bus or we can ride the bike or we can um, uh, walk or we can get in the car. And all of those options are safe options, um, which I think is really important. I think that's kind of what's been missing in a lot of the new development in our community. Um, the other thing that I think is really important about, and, and I, I often forget to mention, but it's it's really important to who I am as a, as a person and the values that I appreciate is my neighborhood has always been a neighborhood where everybody's a part of it and so
I have live in a grew up in a modest home, moved next door, me and my family, uh, to a little bit bigger home on a bigger lot. Um, right up the, you know, around the corner is a mansion and a duplex and, you know, small apartment complexes. Um, and we all fit in the same neighborhood and we all participate in the same neighborhood. And the way that it's built makes it's so that nobody feels excluded, regardless of whether you know you're on a modest income or you know you've got a couple more bucks in the bank than everybody else. And so that, to me, has always been something that's been very important about what I believe community to be, which is where everybody fits and participates and belongs and feels good about their community, and nobody's excluded. And neighborhoods like that, um, that were built like that, really. Um, do that by design.